Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new, I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another video. I'm bringing back, I guess, a part two of me recommending books that aren't big on booktube. I got a lot of love on my last one that I did of this version and I said if you wanted another one let me know and people seem to be interested in finding some hidden gems within booktube that people don't talk about that I absolutely love and if you have the same reading taste as me you may also really really enjoy these next five books that I'm going to be talking about in today's video. I would love to keep this going as a series as I keep reading more books that aren't kind of popular on booktube and just kind of like keep giving you guys recommendations that aren't kind of flooded on booktok and bookstagram and booktube because we know all the same recommendations always always keep getting recommended over and over again and sometimes it's really hard to find fresh books new books that you haven't kind of heard about on the book community before that you might be interested in so that's what I'm trying to do with this little series it's just kind of shine a light on some underhyped books that I feel deserve a bit more love so without further ado let's jump into the first recommendation the first recommendation I wanted to give you is a middle grade book by one of my favorite authors his first work kind of got a little bit of hype on the book community and I, I found this book from kind of booktube and then that's kind of it I don't think he's ever got any more hype with his other works, even though he's released another middle grade and two YA now. So I'm going to re recommend his other middle grade because I think it's just as good as his first one and like where's the hype for it? That is Benjamin Dean's The Secret Sunshine Project. This is his second middle grade book. I cannot wait for him to release more middle grade because I just think they're so heartwarming and joyous and just oh, make my heart warm and fuzzy inside. So his first book that kind of did get a bit of hype on booktube was Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow, which is just here that I have signed. I met him at Yauk. Oh, memories. Um, and then he released this one last year. Last year he released this one. And I read it for one of my readathons and absolutely devoured it in 24 hours. It was so, so joyous. So this one, once again, LGBTQ plus joy book that follows our main character B and her family as they move down to the countryside after having a really difficult year. B's older sister, Riley, is really struggling with this move. So B kind of takes it upon herself to try and make the countryside town that they have just moved to as good as possible for Riley because the last time she really saw Riley happy was at London's Pride last year and um, so she's trying to like bring pride to the countryside basically and oh my god this book was so so heartwarming I love the writing I love the family dynamic once again I think Benjamin Dean does such an excellent job in writing joy for the LGBTQ plus community in middle grade and it's definitely a book that I would check out if you're interested in a quick read, a happy read, something you can just fly through and feel happy reading and I just thought it was a really really cute middle grade book and I'm always torn now between which one I prefer. It goes, depending on my mood and my day when you ask me, I don't actually know which one I prefer between Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow and, me, and The Secret Sunshine Project. So highly recommend both his books and there's a little bit of a special addition to this one. As you can see, I've like weirdly washy take a whole section and that's because all of this is being reprinted and is the exact carbon copy of this bit, if that makes sense very interesting a very unique copy and i will cherish it forever the rest of the books i'm going to recommend in today's video are adult so if you're looking for some adult contemporaries then i have got you covered the first one i feel like kind of got a little bit of hype but has completely disappeared off the online book community spectrum um and that is honey girl by morgan rogers i absolutely fell in love with this book when i read it in 2021 I want to say and then I reread it and tabbed it all up Ah, uh, these are like baby tabs these are like newbie tabs for me um I probably will end up rereading at some point and going in with a pen and making the tabs kind of prettier but pink was love orange was humorous purple was quotes and yellow was kind of information and plot things I needed to remember and I absolutely love this book this book basically follows our main character Grace uh, who has done everything in her life to please her military strict very strict father um, and she's got an education she's got a PhD she has a master's and so she finally feels like she's done with education she decides to book a girl's trip to Las Vegas and then the next thing she knows she's ended up really really drunk passed out completely blank of memories but she's married the girl that's in her bed and it basically follows her journey in self-discovery and self-love and kind of realizing that education isn't the only path down for her and that she can kind of explore other passions in her life and I absolutely adore this book so this is a book that I feel like 
definitely needs more hype. I love the writing style. This is Morgan Rogers' debut book and I have yet to kind of see whether they kind of release any more books. I really, really hope they do release more books because I think this was a beautifully told story just about kind of self-love and self-discovery and just kind of like trying to figure out who you're meant to be and yeah really really highly recommend this book for sure. Keeping on the same theme of self-love, self-discovery and kind of really figuring out who you want to be now a big life change has happened for you is Emily Merrill's Heartbreak House Share. This is a fellow booktuber or used to be booktuber, she doesn't do booktube anymore, but I found her via booktuber. I read her debut book, Mine, and then I became friends with her, um, and then she got, like, published by Harper Fiction North, and she released this book, and I know now she's actually in the middle of writing her manuscript for her second book, which I cannot wait to read. Um, so this is, like, such... This book has a special place in my heart anyway, because one of my friends has written it, but oh my god, was it perfection. I absolutely adored this book. This is also kind of following our main character Flick, who's just broken up from a nine year relationship with her boyfriend. She has nowhere to live now. And for the last nine years, she's kind of, her only identity has been being with this boyfriend and being at university. So when those two kind of finish at the same time, she no longer has a boyfriend, she's finished with the university. She doesn't really know what to do with her life. So she ends up moving down to London and moving into a house share with three other girls who kind of take her under her wing and Flick then decides to create like a 20s list, a list of things that she hasn't yet accomplished in her 20s but want to and feel like she didn't accomplish those things because she was at university and she was in this long-term relationship and now that she's free from those she feels like she can finally kind of accomplish some of the things on this list. So she goes ahead and does this list throughout this book, creates a really incredible bond with the three girls living in the house as well as starts fake dating someone um, as well and a magazine gets kind of wind of what she's doing and then she ends up writing weekly columns for this magazine about her 20s list and oh my god this book was just so much fun to read. I loved the friendship, I loved the writing style, I loved the flick's kind of self-discovery journey and kind of what she goes through in this book to kind of figure out who she is and the 20s list just kind of adds a little bit more kind of structure to the book because you kind of follow her as she tries to complete those these things to help kind of her character growth and oh it's just so good <laughs> so if you haven't read this book i highly highly recommend it i know the audiobook is on script if you have script um but yeah this book is means so much to me because i definitely think it's a book that you need to read in your 20s if you're kind of struggling and you don't really know kind of what to do and you're kind of feeling society's pressure in feeling like you should have things figured out but it's absolutely okay if you don't have things figured out and you're still so young and you still have a lot of life ahead of you. So this book kind of just encapsulates kind of all of those sorts of feelings and I just highly recommend it for anyone in their 20s trying to figure out life. Yes! <laughs> Before I go on to my last contemporary recommendation for this video, I'm going to mention a book that I've recently finished. This book is a little bit more niche. It definitely isn't a book that I can recommend to everyone, but I needed to recommend it because I know there's people with similar reading tastes out there to me, similar passions, similar hobbies, and similar interests. So I feel like I need to mention this book because although I feel like if you're interested in this subject, you may have already read it, but even so, if you haven't, I still highly recommend it. That's Matthew Perry's memoir. I have recently just devoured this book and not because I read it in 24 hours. I spent over a week reading this, but I tabbed it all up and I annotated it. And this book basically follows, if you don't know Matthew Perry, he was Chandler Bing in Friends for 10 years. However, throughout his entire career, throughout his entire life, he has struggled with drug and alcohol addiction. So be wary of those triggering topics if you do want to kind of get your teeth into this book. But I wanted to recommend this book because, yes, I got so much out of it being a massive Friends fan. Like, I am such a big Friends fan. I actually, this book made me want to re-watch the entirety of Friends and kind of, now I know what Chandler, Chandler Bing, now I know what Matthew Perry went through playing Chandler Bing. It'll be really inter interesting knowing that knowledge and watching Friends now um, and kind of watching Friends on like a different perspective knowing what Matthew Perry went through. He wrote this book not for the fans of Friends, he wrote this book to help fellow addicts kind of deal with what they're going through. Although I wasn't the target audience for this book, I still got a hell of a lot out of it. Yes, because I'm a Friends fan, but in retrospect, Friends is a very minute part of Matthew Perry's life um, and he did say that Friends saved him on multiple occasions and he's so grateful for Friends and what it kind of brought to his life but he goes through so much more in his book and I feel like it's one of those books, I feel like it's a bit like Je Jeanette McCurdy's 
and Glamour Mum Died book where even if you're not a Nickelodeon fan, even if you're not a fan of her as an actress or kind of a celebrity, you still can take things away from the book and I feel like Matthew Perry's memoir is very similar in that, that kind of aspect because you don't need to be a fan of Friends, you don't need to be a fan of Matthew Perry to get something out of this book in my personal opinion so I really highly, highly recommend it. Unfortunately I can't find the audiobook anywhere, I would love to listen to the audiobook and hear Matthew Perry's words in his own voice but Unless I pay a monthly subscription for Audible, I cannot get this book anywhere as an audiobook and I just don't want to pay for it. This book will be cherished by me forever now and live rent free in my head and I'm going to put it down because it's really messing with my lighting but I absolutely adore this book and if you have an inkling in reading it or you've had kind of some sort of interest, I do really highly recommend picking it up because I think, like I said, even if you're not a Friends fan and even if you're not a Matthew Perry fan, I feel like you'll get something out of it because Matthew Perry tells his story in such a vulnerable way that you really feel for him and it's so joyous at times when he's kind of getting back on track and he has some good seasons of Friends but then it's also really heart-wrenching to know what he went through during Friends like just as a, it's not really a spoiler I'm sure you can find it on the internet somewhere but the only sober season he had in Friends was season nine and he said it was his best season yet and it was the best time of his life and it's so heart-wrenching to know that nine of those ten seasons Ma Matthew Perry wasn't sober he was playing Chandler Bing either on drugs, trying to get off drugs, in rehab, having an alcohol problem um, and he did say oh, that when he's bigger it's because he's addicted to alcohol and when he's really skinny it's because he's addicted to drugs and pills and when he has when he's addicted to both he has a goatee um, and Matthew Perry has always had that way of words where oh, I'm gonna get teary eyed and it's the same with his character Chandler Bing is that he always tries to take a serious topic and when it gets too serious he makes a joke at the end of it. That is Matthew Perry as a person anyway, let alone his character Chandler Bing and that comes through in this book. Every time, <laughs> every time he takes something seriously and he talks seriously for a couple of pages about his addiction he ends up making a joke of it at the end and that is so Matthew Perry down to a T and oh it's so heart-wrenching to read those sections but then you're laughing at the end of it it's just oh it's such a good book ah. um so yeah i highly recommend this book even if you're not a friends fan because i feel like you'll get something out of it and i love him so much so <laughs> ah compose yourself rachel i have one more book recommendation for you in today's video and i've read quite a few of this author's works. This has to be my second favourite to theirs. I think I already mentioned the other books I love. If I haven't, then it definitely will be recommended in my next video when I do this video again. Um, and that is Paige Toon. I absolutely love Paige Toon's writing. She is one of those authors that kind of does my favourite synopsis and plot to a T and I absolutely love her writing. So if you don't know and you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. Um, I am Rachel and I like reading about mundane lives. <laughs> <laughs> and basically I think I summed it up yesterday with Emily when I was book shopping with her um, I summed it up that I like women's chick lit I like just following women's lives as they intertwine I really like it when you follow like multiple perspectives of women and they intertwine in some way I also really like it when you follow women's life um, and they're really struggling so then they decide to make a massive life change and move down to like a beach and start a beach cafe um, and some of my favourite authors who do those kind of storylines really well Libby Page, Page Toon, Lindsay Kelk Giovanna Fletcher, those are kind of like my top, oh Lucy Diamond, <laughs> those are kind of like my top authors in that sort of category and that is kind of like my favourite sort of category. So Page Tune definitely kind of gives me a highlight in that sort of synopsis and category of books um, and the one I'm recommending today is The Ones We Fell In Love With. This doesn't necessarily follow kind of three separate women who kind of go down a different path, this follows three sisters, Phoebe, Eliza and Rose and throughout their lives they all fall in love with Angus, their next door neighbour at different points in their life and you might think oh my god that's such a weird concept like three sisters all falling, falling for the same guy at different points in their life but it was so beautifully told. I remember reading this book in my garden at my parents' house during lockdown. I think it was 2020 when I read this book and I just absolutely devoured this book. I loved the relationships, I loved the characters, I loved the bond between the sisters. The guy never got in the way of the three sisters relationship and I just thought it was a beautifully told story. Not gonna lie, having read it three years ago I can't remember like the real ins and outs I just remember absolutely adoring this book I haven't actually read the physical copy because I read it in an ebook and then I brought the physical copy afterwards because I loved it so much and when that happens you know I love the book a lot when I have read the book kind of 
not physically, whether that's an audio book or an ebook, and then I loved it so much I had to go out and get a physical copy. That's happened a few times in my life, and this is one of the cases. I'm just going to read the back so you can kind of get an understanding of what the book actually follows, because like I said, I haven't read it for a while. I just remember absolutely adoring it. It basically says, Phoebe is caught between a rock and a hard place. Settle down and get married, or return to the French Alps to pursue her passion. Oh, I remember now... Climbing is involved in this book as well. Um, Eliza is in love with someone who is no longer hers. In fact, he probably never was. And her dream of becoming a successful musician seems to be vanishing before her eyes. Rose is out of job and out of boyfriend. To make matters worse, she's been forced to move back in with her mother. But these, very, these very different girls have one thing in common. Angus, the one they fell in love with. Are they sisters? I'm really doubting myself whether they're sisters now. Maybe they're not sisters? I'm pretty sure they're sisters. I remember them being sisters. I think they're sisters, but I... Don't hold me to that now I've read the blurb again. I think they're sisters. But either way, I absolutely adore Paige Tunes writing style. This is one of the best books I've read by her. Five Years From Now being my favourite. The ones you fell in love with being a second favourite. And then I actually tried to start reading her books in publication order. And I didn't get very far, but I feel like I should try and make that a goal over the next couple of years to read all her books because I know I'm going to absolutely love them all and she keeps releasing more and I feel like I haven't taken the time to read many of hers recently when I know that I love her writing so much so maybe I'll make that a mini goal. But anyhow, those are the five books I'm recommending in today's video. I really hope you have found some new books that you may be interested in reading if you have a similar reading taste to me. We have a middle grade, just a joyous LGBTQ book, which I highly recommend, and then an absolutely heart-wrenching celebrity kind of non-fiction memoir, and then some three kind of adult contemporaries about women kind of finding themselves and going on a self-discovery journey, because that is my vibe, if you couldn't tell from the recommendations that I have given so far. If you are interested in reading any of these books now I've spoken about them, let me know which ones in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up, and subscribe down below to see future content from me. I usually do monthly TBR monthly wrap ups, weekly reading vlogs I'm doing until the end of the year now so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those and any other bookish content you can think of I usually have it on this channel so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those and without further ado I'll see you in my next video bye guys